Hey everyone, we are at Computex 2017, day one of show floor coverage, and I'm at the Gigabyte Suite right now looking at some of the new X299 motherboards which were just announced uh, today as of filming actually. So there are four main boards behind me that are X299, some of the other ones are Z270, they're not the focus of, uh, not the point of interest today. For X299, we're going to be going through the Gaming 9, Gaming 7, uh, 3, and go down the line from there. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Corsair and their Vengeance RGB LED memory kits. You can find a link for that in the description below. The RGB LED Corsair kits clock fairly high and are pre-selected ICs for overclocking potential. So let's go through the basics here. Uh, to clear a few things up, X299 being new with the Intel Skylake X and KB Lake X launch, uh, have a few points of confusion still. One of those is the dims. So there are four dims per side, just like with X99, as you would expect. But with X299, the actual concern here, or the question, is uh, what happens when you have KB Lake X? Because KB Lake X, being based on KB Lake architecture, naturally, is really not meant to be used with eight dims. So the answer, just to clarify this, these go unused. So you end up using the four dims on the right side, and that's it. You don't get the other four DIMMs. Those are for the Skylake X CPUs only. Uh, so with that cleared up, we can go over some of the rest of this. These boards are uh, all using the same VRM. So in terms of VRM design, we'll talk about that with Buildzoid separately. But the most important point is just the MOSFETs on here uh, and the controller that we've already seen. And those are all international rectifier components. So they use some of the same parts that we just talked about with EVGA's X299 stuff. They're pretty popular right now. The IR3566 or 3556 components. So international rectifier 3556 is the MOSFET setup. These are eight for V-Core on all the boards behind me, every single board, eight for V-Core. And then there's uh, two plus two for the memory for each side. So that's the setup there. The controller is, voltage control is also IR. Beyond that stuff, uh, there are a couple of points of interest on the board itself. Well, let's start with the Gaming 9. I don't have a price on any of these yet, by the way. So Gaming 9's got all the RGB stuff, as you would expect. Uh, digital RGB up here, and everything's configurable through software, as usual. The uh, one item I want to point out in the bottom is this IRSTE port. So this is actually a special four-pin connector for basically a virtual RAID. Uh, so you have a problem where with RAID, if you're running something like 4 750s, for example, you can't cross DMI from the chipset to the CPU and tap into those lanes. Uh, this helps with that by virtualizing the RAID to some extent. So they've actually got a 4 750 setup, conveniently set up to the side over here. Um, other than that, they've got the M2 shield. So we've talked about these in the past quite a bit. Uh, we've done extra testing on them as well. And on the MSI ones, still kind of runs a bit hot. These, uh, we are told, should solve some of that problem by adding actual fins to the top of it. It's not like they're the biggest fins in the world or the most dense fins, uh, but they do add fins to the top of each of the M2 slots. And then there's a thermal pad on the inside that connects to the M.2 device. Don't have the thermal conductivity or resistivity of it or anything like that, but that's the basics. Uh, beyond that, it's, it's, a, it's an X99 type motherboard, just X299. So that's the Gaming 9, that'll be the flagship. Same VRM on this one. Same VRM here, same VRM here. Uh, it's all IR stuff. It's just some differences to LEDs. For example, no RGB LEDs in the memory slot here. If you want to save some money, you could do it by buying a board like that. You kill some of the LEDs and you get the same VRM. So not a bad trade. They also have an ultra durable four, which is, I believe again, the same VRM. The only one that's not is the workstation board. Uh, so the, the ultra durable four is the zero frills board that Gigabyte is showing here with X299. No RGB LEDs, none of this armor stuff on the PCIe slots, none of the armor on the RAM. So it, it drives cost down a bit. Uh, still should be priced above the gaming three though which is actually on the far left over here. Uh, so it'll still be priced above that, the ultra durable four that is. But I think that runs us through the basics of the Gigabyte line. The VRM is the biggest point of interest that we're talking about right now. We'll have more information as always linked in the article in the description below. So that article contains additional stuff that I didn't talk about here on the floor because it's loud and busy. Um, Check that out. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to buy a shirt. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.